a ball paper. Uh, we've been working at this on and off for a long time, and luckily Jake Short, who's a brilliant young guy, joined us. So it's very similar to what Jeremy, Jeremy was talking about, except two things. I don't know the answer when I start. So I mostly want to tell you what we find, not how the world is. So this is the data as we see this, the, the data you know it. There's a big increase in the share of single women. And of course, single men the same, since we haven't had a, a decent war in the last few years. Uh, there's a larger increase among non-college women. That's sort of missed why that is. So these are some of the facts we are after. And we're going to follow a similar strategy to Jeremy and his co-authors. Now, these things matter for children. There's some people that have been documented then. Well, you know this. Flavio, Flavio has been talking, Flavio has been to <coughs> talking about how important are things that happen early. And even if not only in the first two years, but a little bit later, having a man around seems to be useful. And to the extent that you worry about the quality of the next generation, uh, these things matter. So what we want... Do you have in mind single, never married? I mean, does it matter to you? Paperwork doesn't, I mean, doesn't matter to me. Uh, yeah, yes, it does, does matter. It? it does matter, but you see that those things will happen naturally here. So what we want to know is to what extent uh, these changes in the way people live are associated to observables. And what are the observables are changes in wages. We can measure those things uncontroversially. I do not have to wiggle things around. There's also an increased college attainment of everybody, but especially of females, that adds an additional discipline to what we look. And we want to keep an eye on that. And this is our summary of the changes in wages. All wages went up. This required a little bit of extra work because of the CPI mismeasurements that the CPI underrepresents the increase in wages. So when you hear that, that white blue-collar males don't make more, that's not true. They make a little bit more. It's just that the CPI directly doesn't report it. The wage gap has shrunk, and we, like Jeremy, that's going to be a force of nature. The college premium have increased, especially for men. Is the college premium college to non-college, or just college to high school? It's, the, it's college to non-college. And I, I forgot which exactly it was the line we use, where we draw the line about what is college. OK? OK. Now, one thing that carries a lot of identification power in this is that how the world is. I mean, and the key thing in here is high-wage women are more likely to be single than high-wage men. So when your, girl, when your single girlfriends tell you the best ones are taken, they are up to something. <laughs> OK? The single men are a bunch of useless drunkards. They're going to die soon. <laughs> and they have spent the time in jail. So keep that in mind. And that's going to tell us a lot about how the world seems to be. And in that sense, single women have higher quality than married. And to see that, think of the earnings of married relative to single. And of course, women make less, part of it, I, I forgot whether this number includes the adjust for total hours, but for men it's clearly the quality of married men is much higher than the quality of single men. Okay? Oh, the biggest, um, total income to include the extra As I say, I forgot that, but either way, then the, the, the size of the number, I forgot which one we reported here, the size of the number, of the numbers would change, the facts do not. Okay, so you ask me, in a couple of days, I'll tell you which, which one do these numbers refer to. But those facts are, are there, sharp and clear. 
So what we're going to do is construct a model where there's simultaneous marriage, fertility, and investment in children's decisions. That, that is as consistent as we can make it with family composition and other facts of life 30 years ago. 40 by now, <laughs> as time passes. And we ask our model how people react to the new wage structure and college attainment, and how does the equilibrium change as a result of that. Yeah? So wages and uh, education are going to be no. Wages, yeah, the price of units of wages, the price of a type of labor that is exogenous. Nothing else is. You'll see it in a second. So I'm going to use those answers as a measurement of the contribution of changes in wages to changes in family composition. And we find that the change, just to tell you a preview, we find that the changes in wages account for two thirds of the increase of single women. And mostly is the decrease in the gender wage gap. So the logic is simple. You can think, there are two ways of thinking of why marriage declined. I would say the Jeremy way, which is, or the Michelle way and the Carthos way, which is the gains from economies of scale are shrinking because we're getting richer. And the quality of the match, in a way, is it's something absolute. And as a result, you get peakier over time. That's one way, and that's responsible for a big chunk. And Jeremy has documented that if you look in detail at the, at the minutia, how you arrange life, then, then productivity increases in different sectors exacerbate that. Is that. I was trying to be fair about that. The other one is the following, that we sort of discover here, and, and the model is going to tell us that that goes on, which is m women never liked men. And now they can afford not to put up with them. <laughs> That's what is going to jump from here. And, and in a way, the model is, or the estimates of 1970 are telling us a little bit which one of those are there. And the, sort, and the type of singles that we saw in the 70s tell us a lot about that. Yeah? These are two very similar statements. I don't think so, because men are, men are stuck. Men love women. It's just <laughs> they cannot tell them, they cannot seduce them. So, so imagine you change, in the, you change relative wages. Okay? Imagine you're the picky one in 1970. Oh, women, yeah, they are good, but they don't bring that much to the table. So you're picky about what does it, how good does she have to be to put up with her. Now she gets a bigger pie. That's a lot of free riding you can get, so you can say, well, now you're going to be less picky because they bring more to the table. So if you were the picky one, marriage rates would have increased because the picky ones are rewarded more. But it turns out that it is the opposite. OK, that's as which the two stories are not the same. You know, it's just, it's just that's, it's a, that's a finding, it's though. It's a finding, fine, but you know. Well, it's, uh, that's a, it's a finding, fine, it's really? It's really, it's which it's business it's are you in? Term. Which business are you in? Term. It's a finding, no, fine. No, it's, <laughs> an, it's an interpretation. Okay. It's how you write your model. Okay. Does it sound right to you? Let me, uh, uh, don't tell me to find it. Let me finish my sentence. Okay, finish Does sentence. it sound right to you, question mark, continuation? It doesn't sound right to me. You, you know, you just talk to women who are not married, myself excluded. Uh, you know, they want to get married. They do, want, they do seem to want to get married. It, it just doesn't feel right. How many times you. have you said no? <laughs> 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 because okay. it was the wrong guy. <laughs> Of course I want to get married, but Madonna <laughs> keeps telling me no. I mean, that's the same. It's, a, it's the amount of pickiness. That's not, it's not saying that you don't like any. It's just that the ones you find are not worth it. That's all. The best ones are taken. <laughs> you see, but really, that's, that's just a way of looking at that. And I don't appreciate very much if it's a finding fine. I'm in the business of it. But it's not that different from what Jeremy's model. Oh, yeah, it is. Because there, life is symmetric. It is. Life is, life is symmetric completely. There's no, no. The difference between a man and a woman, in his model, a, a, a woman is just a stupid man. And, and gay sex is illegal. That's the only theory. Here, women have different tastes. And they are different. They have monopolies over childbearing. Those are two very different things, yeah. 
So anyway, I wanted to separate myself a little bit because otherwise I look like a lousy version of theirs. <laughs> <laughs> but not really, Ben. I want to use the elbows a little bit. OK, so but you see that, the, that what the model predicts for 2000 is, is says 2 thirds, but 2 thirds is an overly <coughs> nice interpretation. In many ways, the model misses lots of important things, especially the relative behavior of college and non-college towards a few margins. Bunch of papers here, as I'm going to ignore them. So the model. The, so how would you have a model to address these things? <coughs> so exponential life and aging process. This is a little bit a feature of the age of the paper. You don't want to have too many ages, so it's, but you don't want them to be starving for partners for too long. So you want periods to be relatively short. And so, so we settle for three ages. You can be a child. There are four ages, actually. So this is a mistake. That you can be a child and therefore a, a victim of your parents. You can be a young adult. You can be an older adult. Or you can be in the limbo of retirement. So there are four ages, and you age stochastically. So agents in here are different sex, age, and education earnings. So when I say education earnings, I mean I'm going to, sex is, in this model at least, is not a variable. But, I mean, it doesn't change over time. But age and education but earnings pot potential, that's all going to be summarized by this one variable. So adult is either young or old, and it's embodied in here. You can live in either one or two people Households, and you care about the utility of consumption, the, your love life, and your children's future well-being. And you care both about the quantity of children and how well they do in life. Rico, just to clarify, the word potential again means uh, depending on what choices they make. It's not that it's where, where did I say potential? Potential is that uh, you know that as you get older, the life earning, the profile of your earnings potential means two things. As you get older, that's going to change. But also, it means that you have an endowment of time that you can allocate to, rare, to raise children or not. And what, you, what indexes women is the total amount of the value of the time that they have. Whether you realize it as earnings or not is a choice. It's non stochastic it's non-stochastic, it's, well, m for, no for the most part. You see in some, in some little pieces, but not for the most part. So Victor, why do you have retirement? Retirement, it's limbo. It's about, why do you just die? It's the same. fine, it's the same. I, I think it's the same up to some estimate that we wanted for something, but, but I actually, the answer is I don't remember. So this idea, that, this idea that uh, women are intrinsically different from men? No, intrinsically different, we mean, mean idea. No, you, you, you said it. Women have monopoly power over childbearing. Yes, that's not an idea, I don't think. I hope not. <laughs> I, you can have half a baby, you tell me. I want to see that. <laughs> okay. Not li literally. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking. In preference, they have a baby. Show it to me. No, but if the man doesn't want to need, you also should have. I mean, you also need the man, no? But men like they. You need a man, no? no. You need a little. You need a little well, tube that is available in in, in suitably chosen right. stores. What do you mean then? Well, if you start saying that, a man can have a baby. Right. I mean, he exactly. just needs to find the woman he can run like, right. tube. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if we get to the no, but I, I guess, I, sorry, my micro, my, maybe my confusion. I guess you meant something about decision making within the household uh, on the side of women. So women I'm saying about, who decides about the future of the children? We'll, we'll get into that in the, into, into, into something. But no, that, <laughs> that option of buying yourself a baby in the open market, uh, 
I'm gonna take, it's rare, it might be that men are choosing not to, I'm taking it as it's not in the choice set, yeah. So there's an evolutionary biology explanation which is that eggs are the scarce resource and sperm are plentiful because there's no sort of, there's no cost, opportunity cost to men to like have many children, so they're willing to provide sperm, whereas there's an opportunity cost to women to provide the egg and incubate the baby, so they're not willing to provide um, the eggs, and so we can observe this on the market for sperm donors and egg donors, right? Sperm are much cheaper than eggs are on the open market. Let me pull a Victor in here. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks that she's on my side, I'm going to be brutal with her. <laughs> Evolutionary biology explanation is one of those oxymorons that run into life. That's, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. So this is just <coughs> the base. I think m most of these models share these features, except of the babies thing. Now we're going to make some additional assumptions. Some of them, some of them, deliciously extravagant to make this to make this small. So children are attached either to single females or to adults. That's not that extravagant. Fathers forget their children and instantaneously dislike the children of others. So life is complicated, and I don't want people, and a C variable is all your past complicated life. So I'm going to get rid of it by saying these two things. Uh, fathers forget the children, and their dislike for the children of others only lasts one period. It can be enormous but it's forgotten after that. Divorce is free and there is no child support or, or alimony. This is just to not keep track of men's things. Utility is not transferable. That's because the decision-making process doesn't need this. V women choose fertility unilaterally and have at most one child per period. Women, no, this is not true. That's a big assumption. Which one? This one, this one is wrong, so uh, hopefully, the, or the one before. I mean, that's seen the structure of the model gets back to what Pierre Andre said, like, like, can't be Yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about more in detail, a little bit, what does it get? And this is one of the goofy ones of the line. Parents do not know the sex of their children. And why is that? Because families can have zero, one, end up having at most six, I think, is the highest that they have. Lack of the sex of your children, the rewards to education are going to be different. And the number of children that you, that you, the sex composition of your children will shape your investment decisions in their education. And therefore, that gets out of control complicated. So, to make life simple, you just don't know the sex of your children. We've worked on that, on the differential college attainment in a different context. So all the families age together and investments only pay upon age. And you see that that's going to buy a lot what of things. Six? Yeah, women choose investment in children. No, this is, this is wrong. This is wrong. You see that? It, why it's wrong? So what is an agent? An agent enters a period with a state Z. And you at W. W is your variable that composes age and education together. This is the number of children associated to your household. This is whether you're married or not. This is the only, Jeremy and I agree, this is the only contribution of international economics to science. <laughs> the notation, I always say this joke, the notation that the star means the other. Okay, so this is the, the wage education age of your partner. Eta is a Markovian nature of your quality of your partnership this is the permanent na nature of your love, and epsilon is a temporary one. Okay, so both. It's like, it's not, ex it's not an air one, because I want it to be. More this is just evolution of ways. You can, you age stochastically. The That's it. Though, yes, because you live in a household with a certain <coughs> number of children, of course. But he forgets them. No, he forgets them once he becomes single. After he becomes single, whatever the past is gone. But when he's married, there's no wealth in here, so when he's married, you don't. Um, the number of children, whether you're married or not. So this is, this, 
the waste type of spout. So the only, notice that the, the, we have no exempt heterogeneity in any dimension whatsoever. But the type comes only from educational outcomes. Okay? And yeah, temporary marriage quality. Okay. So in this model, uh, as Peter Andre will notice, there is. It's going to take away, liberate me from the corset of an AR1 okay, and have them and make a true temporary, that the, the innovation is separated from the persistence. <coughs> That's what's going to happen. And allows me to get the values of this data are sex dependent, which means it tells you what does it mean a good or a bad match for men and women is allowed to be different. But and this temporary one is. And this, the epsilon, is what, the, is what makes the, the, the thresholds of divorce. Okay, where? Disagreements within the couple. They disagree about whether to be married or not and whether to have another kid or not. Okay, so we're going to avoid the technical issues of disagreement by. by there's also just of how much to invest in children. So there's these three decisions where, where they may or may not see eye to eye. So we avoid the technical issues of disagreement by requiring unanimity, which is to stay married, which means it takes two, and you cannot take, somebody may want to remain married or to get married, but if there's no way to convince the other person if the other agent doesn't want to. We give the wife sole decision power for more children. That's just a simple way <laughs> of choosing bargaining and achieve one. Just saying there's no way that the man has an input in there. <coughs> I think so, isn't it? No, maybe not. So, so obviously it's isn't it not even infinity? Giving the wife the full bargaining power. Yeah, not even infinity, isn't that? She decides. I'm asking technically, is that if I give her the power of infinity, isn't that the same thing? Well, but, but she, she, might, she might want more, she might want more money. There's no way to do that. She might want not to. She might want to stay married, and you don't want to stay married. She can't change. She can't say, "Look, we'll have one plus." Case. It's a time. It's a decision. Make. It's a. It's a sequential decision that will take care of those things. Right. She's, she's always going to use. She's thinking, "Well, if I have another kid, then that, then that my husband is coming in." So, why don't yeah, yeah. Don't, I but that happens. Th that happens. That happens over time. Yeah. And we're going to, the key thing though, is the one that is tricky is the investments over the children, the location within the period. And we're going to carefully cook the models so that there is no disagreement. How do we do that? We do that by, because remember, these people may not be together tomorrow and the men will forget. What we're going to do is that you invest today, and if you age, that's when the returns to location sue for the children and things happen. If you don't age, that's gone, money gone under the bridge, money and time going under the bridge. So there is no, no, the, the way the value of functions are constructed, that there's no disagreement about <coughs> how much to invest in the kids. Okay? What would go wrong if you just use the standard sort of, uh, uh, you know, collective model type? Uh, well, it's, it's just that they, they, they're going to, def they, they're going to want to invest different amounts. Why is that important? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that will solve. That will be a completely different way of of getting at this whole issue of how to get married and how not, and whether transferable utility in these models will make that will have the given what we are seeing that is very hard for a complete for so many men to be single, and for well, why are those matches happening? Why are all these educated women being single? If men who want them cannot do the dishes in forever to get them. So I think it's, it's an asset of this model that we do not do that. We are able to, to get around this, to get at the possibility that all those seemingly good things to happen do not happen. I mean, those are not your only options. You can have a model where people are bargaining within the household or they're solving a collective problem and it's not fully transferable. Yeah. I could, I could, I, I could, I could, and that would add a lot of, a lot of extra, a lot of extra things that I don't think would yield much over this. They are not that. If the woman wants more kids, then the male says less investment. 
But they, they're going to see that happening. They're going to see that happen. So, let, let, let. so a, a, to implement this, a period is sort of divided into three sub-periods. People, so at the beginning of the period, people choose a marital status. Then women choose the amount of effort towards having an additional child or not. That means fertility is stochastic, but they have control over it. They decide on consumption and investment in children in terms of mother's time and resources. So how much money and time to invest in the, in the education of children. At the end of the period, exogenous variables get updated, which is wages, age, love from the spouse, if married, or from a date if single, and time goes by. So yeah, so this is just saying the same thing with goofy notation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can see this happening. Just yeah. The moment that you don't invest, what do you lose? Oh, you eat it. So what's the utility? I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I just going to, I'll, I'll get to that in okay. a second. And yes, yeah, so to see how this goes. So this is the utility function of, uh, this is the problem of a single mother, which is, is that she has consumption expenditures. This is the size of the household. So there's equivalent scales. Then with probability pi, she does not age, this counts the future, and her type evolves like this, where her age gets updated. She's, tomorrow she's still single. <coughs> tomorrow she has whatever children is the outcome of her choice today. And she will draw some fella from the distribution of singles. If we try to one minus pi, she ages, she goes to limbo, and that's the sense of which that's all it does. And she gets utility from her children. And this is the decrease, this is the one children, you, the more the merrier, but at a decreasing rate. And you assess them like that. I'll tell you more a little bit like about them in a second. The budget constraint is consumption plus investment in the education of kids equals the time they work, and wage is the earnings potential, and she has one unit of time. This is a, the time she wastes with the children, and this is a fixed cost on the number of children. And this is the trickiest thing to get the right, to get everything right, the number of children and the, and the educational attainment and then the temporal persistence of those things requires us to work very hard. And the conditional probabilities, of course, requires that you understand the equilibrium objects, which is, so these rational expectations means you have to know who's out there. So you cannot solve, that's what makes it very hard to solve non-steady states in here. A single males are boring fellas, there's nothing to do. What? Here, yep. Some yes, no, yes, it's going to be some random outcome where by putting more L and more Y, you increase the probability that these guys, that, the, that your children become college fellows, become college educated. Okay, that's the one. I'm going to tell you what all the... So, what, why the time you spend with kids? What, why is what? And it's a fixed cost of raising kids. Uh, this is what I want. I, I don't want to talk a lot about this today because I'm, it's a little bit foggy still. There, there seems to be some form of nonlinearity in women's engagement in the labor force. Okay? One way of thinking is that if you work part time or less than full time and you're college educated, you get a much bigger hit than if you are doing something else. So in the spirit of that, and to make it, OK, let me, let, let me go back. What's the big problem? If kids are, if you like kids, rich people have, or high educated people have more Mercedes and more BMWs than poor people, why wouldn't they have more kids? And that's a hard thing to do. One of the ways to handle it is the one we're doing here. 
So there is a fixed cost of having kids and that fixed cost. Why is that just a fixed time cost? It's a fixed time. It's a fixed time cost, but it has an index of 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 education. It's a fixed cost, but it's it's indexed by education, and that's we are changing that in lately. But I couldn't have the estimates on that to to trans to substitute that by a nonlinear wage schedule, which looks to me a more natural way of doing that. So that is a convex re rewards to time working. So if you work full time, you you get more than twice, and you're educated, you get more than twice the wage you work across time. This is what it seems to be true in the data, and also this is what it seems to be true dynamically. So the costs of human capital depreciation from separation from the, the labor market seems to be very low except for full-time college women. So, so the college women that at any time stop working full time get a bigger hit. That seems to be their cost, I might tell you about that tomorrow or, or later. But that's here we're doing this fixed thing where they, there is an extra bonus to an extra punishment for the college oh, to have kids. Paper. It's in a different paper, so you'll not tell you about that. Okay. <laughs> So single males work and consume, married couples differ in, in what? This is not even make sense. Anyway, the utility function of females, again, it says consumption. This is the economies of scale, and this is the last thing. Fertility is stochastic, but females can engage in costly in terms of utility effort to shape the probability of having a child. So the way I think, I'll tell you the, the functional form in a second. Therefore, depending on your effort, at this stage of the intermediate period, the intermediate stage during the period, female chooses effort to manipulate the probability of having an extra kid or not. So zero effort is, makes it random. So you have to put effort either to have a kid for sure or not to have it for sure. Both things for sure can happen. But uh, why don't you just make it a decision with uh, some stochastic elements? Maybe? Because I'll tell you in a second why. I'll tell you in a second why. The Myers decision in terms of thresholds. And then population dynamics and rational expectations come com it's just the, the way equilibrium is. So, so agents maximize and the distribution is stationary and agents have to understand what the distribution is at the equilibrium requirement. Okay, and the thresholds. Now, what does all of this buy? That's what I want to say. Value functions are vectors. It's a finite state space. What are those? Remember, is the age and wage earnings and education. That's all one variable that can take four value. Then it's the number of kids up to six. Whether you're married or single, the attributes of your spouse and your Markovian quality of life. That's about, I don't know, 100 or so possible say. So it's a vector. That's good, but there's no approximation there. I can store the value of functions as vectors. Here you don't want to use, because you're choosing whether to be married or not, you always have to use value of functions and not all other equations. Stationary distributions are vectors for the same reason. So I don't have to approximate that. It's just, uh, it's just a vector. I can get it to arbitrary precision. And then decision rules are characterized either by differentiable decision rules or by thresholds. In that sense, the, what a woman chooses to put in terms of effort solves a first order condition and has an exact solution. That's a differentiable, that can solve them, no trouble. The thresholds is for each possible type of, type of couple, there is an epsilon star for the man and an epsilon star for the woman that separates whether you want to be married or not. Okay, so that means that as a consequence, model statistics are continuous functions of parameters. And hence, you can, be, you can estimate them. The problem when you have many state spaces, you want to do something that allows you to have parameters changing slowly and the properties of the equilibrium changing slowly. And many, many people wasted many years. The, the only part of economics where computation was done badly to a disastrous extent was this. 
where you put choose in the number of kids as a discrete variable and then you can change policy but because having two kids is so much better than one there is no action no action but you change another policy and suddenly wow 30 percent of the population choose to have a, a third kid that's all an artifact of the model that gives all the wrong answers so this is all carefully crafted so that doesn't happen that was the answer to to the question of the effort of children what i mean there's easier ways and put another threshold. But that's, but that's as it may, that's what we all want. We want to make sure that that's there, OK? And, and a combination of thresholds and first order conditions and vectors in here is what you want. So can I ask you, I think I missed it, was the investment in your kids? I'll, I'll tell you the functional forms in a second. Oh, but does it matter what you invested all along? Or no, 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 that's it. Matter? As I said, if it only matters the last period, otherwise men and women would disagree because men will know that the kids are less likely to be around than for the woman. Okay, so then I didn't want that. So we're going to match the model with, so this is just the image I'm going to say that, and then we're going to put the inputs of things. Okay. Okay, this is a nasty nonlinear problem, and there are 15 parameters can be estimated without solving the model, like process for, process for wages and, and aging and those things. But 20 parameters are in at least are determined by solving the model, and we target to match 35 moments in some, in some versions, 40 moments in some versions. I didn't want to interrupt Jeremy on the issue of which ways to use. The ways to use, we've been estimating these for years, and the ways to use, we're changing them. Econometricians have this habit of pretending there is an optimal set of moments that allows you that the, mo that the model generates the, what is it, the inverse of the variance covariance matrix or something that allows them to not show you the estimates, no matter how preposterous they are. It's all done <coughs> under the table. The, the theory of where the things are coming from chooses the weights for you, and you are liberated from displaying the embarrassment of an inconvenient, of a, of a not very good match. They just show the likelihood, as if the likelihood had a lot of information. I'm going to show you how badly we do with our pretend attempt with 20 parameters match to match 35 moments, which you know is going to be impossible, and to have a, a simple population structure with, with stochastic agent to match the complexity of real life. So I know I'm not going to do that, and the set of weights are being trying and trying and trying until my embarrassment is shrinking and shrinking because you want the model to do good. Okay? What would you call this method? The method of minimizing embarrassment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, because the, the nice thing about the, about the econometric procedure is that it provides uniqueness in the sense that it, it, it sort of looks like you're not cheating but then you don't have to show them. And the actual quality of the match is not an issue, which I find that not that. Well, you don't find that the recent thing you've had an error. Yes. I can put no, a standard error. They have a with the pretense. Well, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you show them my computer to that young man? <laughs> there, isn't that uh, Samuel Jackson in there? Is Samuel Jackson in there? You see. Look for Samuel Jackson. And <laughs> <laughs> I'll show it to them. Samuel Jackson has a, a picture. A picture you saw the picture. It says something about, about standard errors. OK. <laughs> the utility function. OK, so there's nothing in that interesting here. This is just standard OECD, OECD equivalent scales. We actually estimated that in a different context, but we use OECD here. There's nothing interesting here. So far. Now, the other parameters there were 20. <coughs> the first one is that women get more incompetent as they get older in terms of having kids. So the way to do that is young women, the zero effort, meaning careless behavior, yields more kids when you're younger than when you're older. And as you want to shape the outcomes, you have to put to increase the probability towards zero one. You have, you have to put positive amounts of effort. But they said the aging comes here. So one of the advantages of being young, or, or disadvantages, is that the careless behavior yields more babies. Time cost. 
the technology of education, that's what I want to learn from what Flavio is saying. So the probability of having a kid is a function of time that you put and the money that you put. And the time, this is sort of to make it easy for college educated ladies to, to have kids. There's no cost per child. You can attend, you can talk to three kids at the same time. But you cannot pay for violin lessons. <laughs> you don't get a discount for violin lessons. OK? That's the key thing. Roji, what this Roji said, in the, in the 70s, men went more to college. You don't know the sex of the kids. So the only way that this model can deliver the men go more to college is by giving them a compatible advantage. Yes, like that. OK? This is impossible to happen at the time. We, Virginia and I wrote a paper about the mystery of college attainment of women many, many years ago. Okay. Now, marriage quality, these are the kind of things we have to estimate. That's the two values for each sex, retirement, initial marriage quality. This is where you draw, you draw a perspective of the new people you meet, what's the quality you draw from there. Gives you a probability of that it's good. It's transition of marriage. Then the variance of the IID shocks that happen every period. Then discounting and the decreasing returns to additional children. Then also, it turned out that people would not invest a lot in the, in, in the education of their children unless they got a utility bonus. So we gave them a utility bonus from showing off that the kids went to college. So the model was having a very hard time that having the parents in best education of the kids only for the utility rewards that the kids got. So, so this is the estimate that does that. This is this utility of stepchildren. This took us a, a lot of time to understand. So this is a, a man meets a single mother. She hates, he hates the fact that she's a single mother, okay? But tomorrow, if he, if he still chooses to marry her, tomorrow he will have forgotten that the kids are not his. In, in, in this model, in the absence of this, women will, in, will in start making children as soon as possible because that makes them valuable, because it provides men with progeny. So this is just the, a necessary object in a world where you don't keep track of of who's the father. It's a necessary object to prevent single women from uh, having extra, kids. Extra weight on the education itself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, does that compensate for the richness <coughs> of the investment? Suppose there was no risk in the investment. You invest and you know where the kids you're going, and then that should be cool. No, no that, it doesn't, because that's all it's saying is that it's a continuous function of, of your quantity. The, the riskiness is just saying you get more and more the more you put in. OK, that's all it's saying. That's not to do this. The riskiness is not that risk. It's just, a, it's just an expected value for tomorrow. It's not that. And then there's a utility cost of effort from not being careless about fertility. And that's just tell us what, how, well, this, you estimate that also. So this is the way they model that. So I don't want to bore you. This is some of the 35 parameters we are targeting. And of course, you cannot change them all. <coughs> but the one I wanted to show you, I'll, I'll, rather than how good we are doing, which is, and these are the rest. <laughs> so, so we're working very hard to get all this look good. The one I wanted to, ah. This is the, the key thing about finding. Men like women. Women don't like men, OK? <laughs> this is what it says. And that comes from who's married. That tells us who's married to the extent that single women are better in the sense of the monopoles better, which is more educated. Because they, have, they bring more to the table. If they are more likely to be single, it's because they are very, very picky. And they're very picky, and the model picks that by giving them that the average man they don't like but the temporary thing can be very good, OK? And you, they choose to be married, not only because from the gains from the match, but because from time to time they have a good year. 
So let's say that a woman has a lousy man, a good man. That's as good as a minus point two. And then every period has an ID with mean zero. I mean, the guy can maybe worth it, even though on average it's not, because it's bringing something, it's helping raise the kids, it's bringing some money to the table, and some years will be good. Certainly a bad one, not going to be there. Is this robust to the Victor critique of um, Jeremy's paper? I mean, Jeremy has this utility assumption. Yeah. And uh, what happens over time is as the wedge gets bigger, that utility... Uh, no, you're right. It's not, it's not, it's not a good thing. It is a property that this is a property embodied in this paper, too. And then maybe we should think of it, which is along a balanced growth path, life is becomes an inferior good. And perhaps we should change that. I less worried in here because the, the total increase in which is not that large, but we certainly should change that to think that that Why in the should along the balanced growth path, um, you know, wealthy, not, I don't I don't see that. I mean the way the no is. if the way we write them, we have to, to make our life easier, we put a, a plus in here. I understand. Okay. That. So leisure we cook it carefully so that we do not think that leisure is an inferior good. No, because the data, no, because the data is trying to tell us that. No, they don't tell us that. Ah. Well. They don't tell us that. But we, want, we don't want to impose by construction a fact that leisure disappears by, by, by having consumption growing old. So what I'm going to say is every time you do this, of course. That's going to impose. No, so, of course, you, you, uh, so more flexible. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm that. Indeed, <laughs> choosing a more flexible ends up being a harder thing. And, and for other issues, that's what we should do. Okay? So I said this is the, the, yeah. I'll have to, I have to, 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 uh, to think more about what, what the value of the issue of retirement. The time I was doing something, but I forgot what he was doing. Ah. Uh, okay. So findings. How, how are we doing in time? Three. Three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Findings. So these are the changes in wages, all of them. Okay. So I'm going to put uh, them all together. Can I check? The, the, the men's, uh, are you normalizing a men's high school wage? Yes. You are. So That's they wouldn't be facing that problem. There would be an increase. An increase, okay. but there's, there's an increase of 12% in a high school wage. That's what I said before about the CPI. That some people claim that they have not increased, they have. It's just this measurement of the CPI that induces people to say no. So it's an increase of 12%. It's not very large, but that's what it is. So the fraction of single women is about 60% of that in the data. That's what the model predicts. It's not. We are not in the business of claiming success of saying this is the rival right thing. This is what it does. And among college, it goes all the way. It says these women now make more. They, they are doing better. They have, they have a much better premium. They just, and it's doing a lot less for the fraction of singles among non-college. It's doing a lot less. Perhaps it's a model of uh, non-black. Of? Non-black. So, of course, I said I think is the right thing. But the, 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 from the, the rise in single mothers among non-college, it's probably a huge chunk of that. It's more Not that they're they're only fourteen percent of the population. So no. Okay. They are a bit. It is. You throw them away. This is gonna be smaller. Plus, I don't see why blacks are different than people. Maybe you disagree. They face different conditions. What? They face different conditions. They face different education. They, they were. Different bringing. They, have they were they here. They grew up in, in broken families. They, they, the model in 1970 has them, so it should have them also at the end. Well, but, uh, Let's. Okay, this is a macro paper, I understand. So, uh, <laughs> it's not going on. But there are many other things, uh, you know, going on. That Not kidding. Matter. Not kidding. <laughs> And this is the single mother thought. This was singles, not single mothers. This is also part of the reason, besides all, all this race, part of the reason that, that it's unlikely that we're going to match this 
is that the policy changes are out of sync with the model. The policy changes are the, the phase out of the AFDC. So the AFDC went in and then out. And this model is somehow in between the, the two periods, 1970 and 2007. So it's hard to map one of the two periods to that. So I, I'm not all that worried about that. So marriage rate, it got them down. Divorce rate, it goes them down, but it does it in not exactly the right shape. The sort of mating, Jeremy documented, that has increased a lot. We didn't see a lot of increase in the data, and the model has. In the data, there was a little bit decrease the way we measure it. The model has little action in there, so that way it is. One thing that has happened is more women go to college. So the, the model had no capability of doing that by construction. So we say, OK, let's make them be equal to men in their college, in a way to achieve college. Then the, the increase is a little bit larger. OK, of course. No, this is, sorry. This is it. The increase is a little bit larger. The model, though, does not generate from here that there is an increase in college attendance. So despite the fact that the college premium has gone up, the decrease in returns, the, the decrease in returns to investment of the parents reduce the reduce incentives to and this is the last thing I want to say, reduce the incentives to uh, to send kids to college. Remember, this is the larger college attendance of men and women. It was reversed afterwards and it changed the model when you change the wages and it does not we impose this from before we, we estimated this it doesn't change much so the model doesn't do that so let me finish so we we wrote a model where all these these decisions are 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 um, taken together at the same time i want to see how to Clear observables, meaning the wages and college attainment, have to say about this. And, and the answer is you have to say some, but not everything. And then to think, from given what we've seen in this year, it's like the model is saying that the changes have to include two, at least two more things. And, and John's case for the technology of shaping the, the number of children to the, making it easier to be under your control or or m better details about what happens inside the house it might tell us a lot about, might close the gaps of the things in here. But just the levels of the wages and the double wages do not do about half of the action, but they don't do all. Okay, and we still have the biggest mystery the way I see it that Jeremy solved by saying the quality of non educated people being married is lower. <laughs> And the quality of college that could be more. That's one of the biggest mysteries of how we think. And in general, it's saying if we have a model where love and money are a trade off, why do poor people divorce so much? That sort of mysterious. I want to say what's the big challenge that we have is to have a theory that doesn't need that but to get the going. Model, there's an additional force because basically, uh, in the model, uh, the marginal utility of the market goods and the home goods decline differently. So the poor people relatively consume more home goods. So from the ho household revolution, they benefit more, poor people. And poor people are the same. Yeah, I'm talking about divorce, not the stock of marriage. Divorce is about change. Divorce is about change. No, it's about change from your spouse to no spouse. No. Divorce is about you already have are married, and something changes within the quality of the match. You dump it. It's not about the, the secular. No, no, it's just that. Like, listen to what I'm saying. The mystery is not the trend. The mystery is the differences at, the, at today of why poor people divorce more than, than educated people. The value of being single for them. For them more than. Divorce. That's not about being married. It's about divorce. It's about the change. You got married yesterday, you divorced today. What is it? That makes the quality and the volatility of love so much different. It's not about, 
I'm not talking about the fraction of time you spend marriage, which is what you're answering. It's not about why they marry less. It's about why do you divorce conditional of being married? That's what I'm, that's what I'm well, saying. Why, why do people marry given that they're going to divorce? Uh, right? That's the other way. That's why would they bother yeah. marrying? I think that, that's, that's one of the biggest, but in my book, that's one of the biggest mysteries that is out there. You guys can keep discussing in the coffee break. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.